Hello and welcome to another episode of Andy Ackright History. Today I am standing in the middle of Ward Parkway. Behind me is Pembroke Hill off to the side. You can go down to the Country Club Plaza. In front of me, Ward Parkway to the south with its beautiful boulevards designed by George Kessler. I'm here at approximately 55th and Ward Parkway in a big grassy field because there's something about this field that many people don't know. Now, it goes back to 1864 and the Battle of Westport. Battle of Westport, part of a series of battles, uh, October 21st to October 23rd, 1864, between a Confederate general, General Sterling Price, and a uh, Union general, General Samuel Curtis. So Price is coming over and he's trying to recruit men and he's trying to make sure that Missouri is a slave state and then he wants to capture Kansas City and he wants to capture Fort Leavenworth and he wants to make Kansas a slave state as well. So he is coming over with his militia and he's having little fights along the way and he's, he's winning them um, but, uh, but his army isn't as big. He has approximately 8,000 men, some say 10,000. So now you have that on the Confederate side. On the Union side with uh, Samuel Curtis, he has about 15,000 men. And 15,000 men were called up as from basically what you would call the National Guard. And these Kansans came up to fight because in 1863, Quantrill had raided Lawrence, Kansas. And so they were afraid that Kansas would fall to the Confederacy. So a lot of people joined. In this, you also have uh, a General uh, Pleasanton, sorry, General Pleasanton, and he has a cavalry of about 5,500 men. He's Union. So we have roughly between 20 to 23,000 in the different estimates of Union soldiers versus 8,000 to 10,000 uh, Confederates. And they come to the Battle of Westport, which was fought in and around the Westport area, Westport Landing at the time. And it was where the people would start the Santa Fe Trail uh, before Kansas-Nebraska Act was established. And so they came there and they came down by Brush Creek, they came down by what is now Loose Park, and they came down down here. So they're fighting and they're fighting in Loose Park and they end up with the Union surrounding on three sides, not surrounding. They had the east, the west, and the north cut off. Now the the west there the east was cut off because of a tip given to the Union to come around the other side. So at the end of it all, Price has to retreat to the south. So he retreats to the south. He would then uh, lose another fight and pretty much be decimated. So the Union would win, but there would be 1,500 dead on both sides. So 1,500 dead on both sides, but 1,500 dead out of 8,000 or 1,500 dead out of 23,000. So the Union obviously takes less of a hit, even though they have the same number of men. You also have, at this time, at the battle in Loose Park, the Warnell House, which is at the south end, and it was served as a hospital to both sides, both sides of the troops. Now, when the battle was over, they had prisoners of war. Those prisoners of war, when they died, they were buried in Union Cemetery. Union Cemetery is up by Crown Center and they have a, a monument there to them established by the United States government. But they had this battlefield with all these bodies and they didn't know what to do with them. So 3,000 bodies, 3,000 people died and they didn't know what to do. So they buried them here. So this spot is a mass grave. They didn't know what to do with all of these bodies, they couldn't do anything. They didn't have time to do anything. They had the Warnell House, but that was the hospital and it was treating the injured. And so what they did was they brought them all, all the bodies down to 
55th and Ward Parkway area and did a mass grave. So underneath where I'm standing now, where underneath where all these cars are driving by every day are, could be 3,000 Union and Confederate soldiers buried right here where no one would ever know. They take a turn to Ward Parkway and they drive past this grassy area and they don't know that 3,000 soldiers, both Union and Confederate, buried together under the ground because the people who were taking care of them thought of them as people and not as just one side or the other, but they treated the bodies with as much respect as they could. So right here, this big grassy area is a mass grave from the Battle of Westport, the largest battle west of the Mississippi. This has been another episode of Andy Great History. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time.